Hey y'all, Irick Sky here, and I'm coming at you. Uh, if you're watching this at approximately 6 p.m. New York City time, this is a live show. And behind me on that table there, and I'll kind of tilt my chair so you can kind of get a teaser, and I'm going to bring it closer. But obviously, there you can see Sean Coonery, the enormous Maine Coon cat. But in front of Sean Coonery, there is something called a DJI Spark. And that's going to be what we talk about during this show. Uh, <clears throat> Artisha Douglas says, Wow, was just looking for more St. Martin videos, and I see this live video. St. Martin's a great place. I've got a lot more St. Martin videos coming soon. St. Martin, St. Barth, uh, Anguilla. If you need any, Sandy Allen. If there's anything in particular you're looking for down there, let me know. I'll be happy to, uh, to share some content on my YouTube channel. And then also uh, my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash guy. So, you know, always welcome that. Um, now, this show, travel is always a cool topic, but this show is going to be consumed. I got cat fur in my mouth. Hold on. Ugh. Blech. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, this show is all about the DJI Spark. So let me get that puppy over here. I'm going to have to take it away from Sean Coonery on the table. He's on the unboxing table here in Iron Skies Adventure Channel studio. Hey, Sean Coonery. Excuse me, sir. May I borrow your spark? He said, sure. So right here, this thing is going to blow your mind. This thing is the DJI Spark. Now, I opted for the, uh, for the lava red, which is the color you see here. And the reason I did, I wanted something that was more easy to see against the sky. Because I know there's a lot of colors of this available. And I looked at some of the colors, and I'm like, man, those are cool. They got green, they got yellow, um, they got blue, they got white, they got red. I really liked red because red, you know, when you fly a line of sight to be safe and responsible, it's easier to see. Now, what's really cool about this thing is that before I got it, I was like, wait a minute. Now, when I'm going to get to the controller, I got the controller, I got the battery charger. We're going to go through it all. We're going to dissect this thing from a visual perspective. Haven't flown it yet, just taken it out of the box, and I wanted to do this live show before I even fly it the first time. Because what if it crashes? What if it flies away? What if I never see it again? Then y'all may not get to see this. So, you know, I haven't even taken the little sticky... Uh, uh, Little protective pieces off. We take that off camera lens there. Look. Hmm. Little piece of plasticky type stuff. And then off this vision sensor or whatever it is on the front. Look at that. So structurally, this thing is it I mean it really is incredible. I was expecting well, obviously knowing DJI's reputation, I was expecting a high quality product. But with this I was kind of expecting, you know, you got like a fancy car company and then they release this like just total piece of junk just so they have that car in their product lineup. I was kind of expecting that. And it, uh, it, no, the build quality of this is nice. When you hold it in your hand, it's very nice. And these prop guards, obviously these are, these can optionally be attached. Now the bundle I got came with the prop guards. Check out uh, epicdroneshow.com, and you can find the various bundles there. But I got the prop guards. Look at how these go on. It's very, the design of this is very cool. You just put them down, and then you gently twist. And then after you've gently twisted, you gently press that, and it snaps. So it's got a snap. It's got a, an audible sound. I don't know how well you can hear it on the mic, but listen to this. When I lock the prop guard with this little snap piece, listen to this. You get a tactile feel, but you also get that audible cue that, hey, this prop guard is snapped on. Like the uh, previous DJI drones that we're probably familiar with, the props have those nipples in the middle. Now, this is a white nipple, and then this is a, a nipple without uh, any color to it. So these prop guards also have a, a little color in the middle. Like This one right here has a little white thing indicating that this white prop guard mixes up, matches up rather, with the uh, <clears throat> with the propeller that has the white nipple. 
So it's it's easy to look at this to to be able to uh, to be able to snap the prop guard zone with a lot of without a lot of thought. Now, obviously, what I'm doing right now while we're hosting this show is charging the batteries, and we're about to get the controller out. But let me grab one of the batteries because I want you to see what this thing looks like with the battery attached. Let me go over here and get it. Oh no, these batteries are these batteries are completely charged. They charge quickly. That's that's another advantage that people may not think about with the with the batteries being smaller and more lightweight, they also seem to charge more quickly. So that's cool. Uh, this battery says 1480 milliamp. So the battery goes on. It's very nice. If you ever messed with, and it was a disappointment in my opinion, but if you ever messed with the Parrot Bebop, which was kind of a similar size, the, uh, the way in which the battery attached to it was just counterintuitive in my opinion. That snaps on. It gives a reassuring audible pop uh, indicating that it is attached. Now when you attach the battery, you will notice that the weight of the drone is significantly greater. And that was something I was curious about. And obviously at the time of posting this, hosting this live show, I have not yet flown this. But when you attach the battery to the Spark, you notice a considerable weight difference. And I, I do have a scale that I may break out here in a minute. And we'll weigh it with and without the battery. And, uh, but that adds a lot of weight. So this in my hand, it feels pretty heavy. And that's, uh, that's good because one of my primary concerns, having not flown it yet, is how can it handle a mild amount of wind? You know, is this going to be heavy enough to be able to handle a mild amount of wind? And that's what we're going to test. But I feel confident that um, that it that it may actually uh, be able to hold up. And look real closely here at the gimbal. Now, obviously, this gimbal is not as advanced as a gimbal on a uh, on a Phantom or a uh, Mavic Pro, but it's. I like the way it's, see if you look at this from the side here, I like the way it seems to be somewhat protected. Now they're not landing gear per se on the drone, but there's these little raised rubberized filling feet. They're on the battery and they're also on the body. So you know it's landing it and I'm going to use my landing pad just to be safe so when I'm out in the grass I don't want to get this thing dirty I want it to land on something something uh, clean so I'm going to do that in my first field test but it doesn't appear as if the the camera would be compromised while landing now obviously if you're landing on a on an uneven surface that was rocky and or grassy you know you may you may subject yourself to some potential uh, hazards there while landing so that's something to be aware of but just the the build quality of this is ha, has exceeded my expectations it feels very solid it looks to be very well engineered you know something that we uh, something that we have come accustomed to being the norm with DJI and I will fly with and without the prop guards because that's a curiosity of mine you know how can it how can it how well can it fly with the prop guards and if they're off does it have an advantage because I know with the Phantom that was something a lot of people would ask but hey man why do you put why do you use prop guards on your Phantom and I'm like well I want to be safe and I want to be perceived as safe you know we need to promote this hobby of flying drones in a positive way we want to have a positive image uh, when it comes to the media's perception you know they'll try to spin anything into a negative but we want to look as safe as possible so for that reason I love prop guards and I was thrilled to get uh, you know to get prop guards in my bundle and again if you go to uh, go to epicdroneshow.com you can find the spark the various bundles I'm gonna post a plethora of content there I'm not uploading it now because I don't want to kill the bandwidth but uh, <clears throat> I've got an unboxing video in 4k that y'all can watch and you can see everything that's in the box But yeah this is what the spark looks like now let's get the controller. Now obviously I got the bundle that came with the controller. Uh, my controller is charging right now. Curiously enough, my controller did not come with a controller charging cable. It was missing from the box. I guess they, 
they failed to pack it in. The good thing is it's just a, what do they call it, a micro or a mini USB. The same charging cable that I use for my Sony Alpha cameras is the charging cable that will charge the, uh, the DJI Spark controller. So that was a, that was a sigh of relief because I didn't, uh, yeah, they do have a yellow. They have a yellow color. Uh, check out EpicDroneShow.com. You can find all the different DJI Spark colors there. Um, I got red. The reason I got red again is that I like the way that it that it'll be more visible against the uh, the sky as the backdrop. Whether it's clouds, uh, whether it's a sunny day with blue sky, whether it's a sunny day with with white clouds flying around, um, it'll just be easier to see. You know, when I'm flying line of sight to be safe and responsible, it'll be easier to receive. It'll be easier to see while I'm flying. Now the DJI Spark controller, the build quality feels exceptional. If you've used the Mavic Pro controller, you, you probably understand that the that the quality is great. Uh, the uh, the charging port obviously is is right there. That's that Sony Alpha style uh, charging port, like I mentioned. Uh, like I mentioned, I use the cord is in the front pouch of your bag. Let me grab the bag because in the front pouch I did have the charger, and I'm going to get that here in a second. So the bag. This thing came with this bag, right? This is the bundle I got. It's got this bag, and uh, I looked in the in the front. I think you're referring to this front zippered area, and I did have in this front zippered area. I had the uh, the triple battery charger, and I'm going to bring that on the camera here in a minute. But there was nothing else, and I also looked in the uh, see if there was something up here. There's a zippered area up here, but I didn't have my controller charging cable there. I dug through all this stuff, it wasn't in there. I went in that little uh, paper thing that came with it, that, that that's silicate gel, I need to throw that out. But I went in the uh, little paperwork area that came with it and and it didn't have the, uh, it didn't have the charging cable there. But like I said, all it is is just the standard, I mean I've got tons of those cables sitting around because I use them to charge my Sony Alphas. But if you didn't have that type charging cable and yours failed to include the thing, you would probably be disappointed because then you're gimped to flying with a, um, flying with your tablet or type device only. So yeah, this is the little bag that came with it, kind of cool. I mean, I, I'll take it out, not waterproof, not ruggedized, you know, something that is an issue for me because I always take a waterproof and ruggedized case. It came with this styrofoam piece so, you know, this is the uh, same type quality that you might expect with your, with your Phantom or whatever, you know, with the case. And, th and then this right here, you know, you could put this in your bag or you could put this in. I'm probably going to engineer a waterproof and ruggedized case and stick this in there. The, uh, did you get two batteries? Great question. Yes, it came with, it came with one battery attached to the drone and then an extra battery that was in this case. The extra battery right now is on the battery charger. I'm about to run over there and get that so y'all can see it up close. But this is the, uh, this is the case that you can stick your, uh, now it's not, it's not gonna work if you have your prop guard zone. See, when you have your prop guard zone, it's, uh, it's too big to fit in this case. But if you take your prop guards off, we're gonna do that. I just want you to see how this looks. Um, so to take the prop guards off, I simply, again, gently unclip, gently twist. You know, treat these things with care because you, you don't you don't want to damage your drone. You don't want to get too excited and hurry and and uh, break these little latches and doohickeys. So there's that. Taking that one off, and then I'm taking this one off. right here twist gently pulls off I mean it's obvious that as they continue as DJI's continue to create newer and better drones just the R&D that goes into them I mean this is so nice I mean it's just it, it's built for it. I mean obviously it is built for it so now the prop guards are off obviously these propellers if if you didn't know if, you, if you're new to drones when when you start to fly these will separate these will spread out 
but when you're not flying, um, I guess you use your phone for display. We're going to get to that here in a minute. I may use my iPhone 6S Plus, but I'm going to use something else. Uh, Mark says, really curious, do you think those little props could cut your skin like the larger drones? I would assume, based upon how sharp these feel, I would assume they could potentially amputate a finger. And for that reason, you know, I've seen people that hand catch a drone, hand launch a drone. That's a, uh, that's a demonstration that I will probably stay away from. I mean, I, I don't want to sacrifice my fingers, my eyes. You know, I always wear sunglasses to be safer. But, uh, yeah, these, these could definitely do some damage. Um, so right here, now let's show you this little case that came in. See this little styrofoam type thing? So it sits in there, and then you put your, uh, you got your little props, you, you spin them that way, and then you close her up. And you take it out to the field in a safe and responsible location. You're like, hey guys, I bet you don't know what's in this case. You're like, case? That looks like a piece of styrofoam. And you're like, no, man. No, no, it's so much more. And they closely inspect it, and they see that DJI logo right there, and you're like, DJI? Hmm? And then, let me present. Ta-da! That is the DJI Spark. So, this case also, obviously, as I mentioned, it has two slots there, so you can put one spare battery there, one spare battery there, so this little styrofoam piece if you purchase an additional battery, assuming you get the bundle like I got, um, you could have two spare batteries and then the battery attached to the drone itself and fit all that into this little styrofoam piece. Now obviously the controller does not fit in that styrofoam section so this is a separate um, this is a separate component. Um, I want to show you all the battery charger. It's, I think my batteries are charged so I'm going to get that yeah yeah my battery is charged what's cool about this battery charger is that so on this side see I've got this plugged in this is the charging brick the charging brick has two USB ports which is nice because you could char I could charge using one USB port I could charge my iPod Touch that I'm going to use. I'm going to demonstrate that here in a minute. And the second one, I could charge the uh, the DJI Spark controller. So that's pretty cool. This cable obviously uh, is a United States style cable, but it detaches from the brick. So if you know when you're in other countries, you know just get you a different uh, type cable and and be all hunky dory. And then that plugs into this, which this can accommodate. I've got one battery in there now. <clears throat> Look at that. You just pop your battery in. This is fully charged, and it's saying, hey, go fly me, go fly me. And then this plugs into that, see? So on this side, you've got this type connector that you would use to, um, to plug into the wall charger that I just showed. But what makes this really nice is that on the other side, look at that. That is a USB type thing so you can use and again I mentioned earlier I, I film with Sony Alphas this is an aftermarket uh, Sony Alpha style charger that I use I could stick this puppy in and I could charge this in a boat I could charge it from a USB solar panel it really opens up the the options this is something that makes in my opinion something that makes the spark revolutionary from a travel perspective because now not only can I charge one battery on the go with USB or USB solar or you know car boat cigarette style lighter in the car or boat but I can charge three concurrently and that's what's so wonderful about the uh, the smaller design now yes and I will openly acknowledge I'm very bummed that this does not have 4k I will not get 4k video from this but I'm excited because I'm, I'm enjoying this, just this marvelous engineering. I mean, this is very well designed. And see, I got room for a third battery. I've only got two batteries right now. But if I had a third, it could go right there. 
got this little charging thing. It's very, it's very clean. It's a very, um, just high qual, high, the build quality, you know, unless you hold one in your hands, it's hard to realize. And what's funny, as we mentioned earlier, when you put, when you hold this without the battery and then you stick the battery on, um, snap, see it snaps, reassuring snap. You just notice the weight difference, and this definitely feels heavy enough. It feels like uh, it feels like it should uh, it should handle wind well. That's that's one of my biggest to be tested type things, you know, seeing how this spark handles the wind. But I, I, I remain optimistic that uh, that hopefully it'll handle it very well. These are the prop guards again. I'm going to uh, going to put put these in the that little bag thing I can carry all of this and that I mean it's it's really traveling to and from the flying location this thing is is super portable and convenient I mean look at this I got extra props there extra props there hopefully I won't break props but if I did I've got extras and then the extra battery like I mentioned earlier I can put uh, Let's see, one extra battery in that side, that leaves room for one there if I happen to buy another battery, if I like the Spark and decide that I want to keep it as part of my arsenal. Um, I've got room for three batteries in this, one in the drone, one on each side. So just a very convenient, I mean, you can go out with this and it doesn't, you know, just again, what we had talked about earlier, the, perce the perception of this, when people see this, it's small, it's lightweight. You know, it's not something massive. It's not an Inspire. It's not too big. It's not too heavy. It's not even as big as a as a Phantom or a Mavic. So when people see this, even if they're the type that are that are negative people, you know, they want to, man, I don't like drones. I don't want to see that around me, blah, blah, blah. Maybe they will feel better when they see this. Yeah, uh, B. Endo, the build quality seems uh, seems very, very nice. I mean, it's... That's the thing that impressed me the most because honestly, you know, knowing DJI's reputation, I expected a quality product. Uh, but what I didn't expect was something that was so small and for this size feels so heavy. I mean, I don't, I don't mean it's too heavy to carry, but I mean it feels heavy. I feel like when I fly this thing, I hear shortly that it will, uh, it'll be able to handle the wind very well. I, I think it's something that that is going to be a um, I think it's going to impress me I mean I know the the absence of 4k video will disappoint me I'm prepared for that but I think the flight dynamics may be acceptable and, and again that's just gonna be tested in the field and and in the spirit of the channel like everything I do I'm gonna go out there and I'm <clears throat> I'm just gonna you know, obviously everything will be updated and safe, and I'll be in a safe location, but I'll be prepared for whatever. You know, the good, the bad, combination of both, whatever it is. Uh, let's see. Steel Talon says, the bag that the Flymore combo comes with is nice. With some doing, I'll be able to get everything. Yeah, the, the bag is, the bag it comes with is pretty nice, but uh, stay tuned to my EpicDroneShow.com because I will... I uh, will be identifying a uh, waterproof and ruggedized carrying solution for the DJI Spark, and obviously I'll feature it there on EpicDroneShow.com. But yeah, the bag that, that comes with this is nice. It's kind of got a, a grippy type bottom. Um, you know, it seems to be seems to be very good quality. So I, I was impressed with the bag that it came in. I'm impressed with everything, and what I'm what I'm excited about here. Now keep in mind. Your Mavic is going to have, on the Mavic controller, you're going to have cables here, whether you're using iOS device or you're using, uh, or you're using a, uh, an, an Android device. But since this uses Wi-Fi to communicate instead of, uh, instead of LightBridge or OcuSync, I guess I should say, uh, this does not have a cable. So it's a lot cleaner. And see, this is, this is a device that I, will be flying with uh, with my be flying my DJI Spark with and it's just an iPod touch you can find and I'll, I'll post a link to it when I post my first flight video uh, but you'll be able to find it on epicdroneshow.com just a 
an iPod Touch model that I've fallen in love with. It's it's uh, it's affordable and it gets the job done. It's not too big and it's not too heavy. It's it's convenient to travel with along with uh, with the other gear. Um, a Nate Sarag, as far as the as far as the site's concerned, man, if you go to EpicDroneShow.com, uh, just go to the store, and then that'll link you to uh, to where where the drones are available. I'm not actually I'm not actually shipping the drones. That just links uh, links you there. I'm just making it easier for everybody. Uh, Svec says, so how's the update policy of DJI apps? Do they implement new features modes from time to time, or do they limit those in recent model? In firmware, of course. Uh, again, all that I've done is literally I've, I've taken this drone out of the box and I've shown y'all what's here. I haven't even flown it yet. I haven't even powered it on yet. I just charged the battery. So all of that is content that I will be investigating and I will be posting uh, uh, videos and, and future live shows here on epicdroneshow.com. So, um, it's, it's going to be fun to explore all of this because there's tons of questions and that's why these these live shows are so imperative and you know this live show right now without having even having flown the drone <clears throat> this live show is a value because questions just like the questions you ask um, that you just asked rather those are highly beneficial because those are things to be tested in the field I think the first flight since I've got two batteries obviously a few things that uh, that are super important you know I want to test the battery life you know I'm not gonna fly around really fast I mean ultimately I'm I'm looking for uh, looking for slow and smooth you know I want to get good video quality good video stability I don't care about racing and this that and the other although I may explore the speed of this drone in future videos that's not my that's not my uh, way of having fun I want to go out and capture high quality videos and I want to see how the 1080p will do. So that's going to be one of the things today. What I want to do uh, during my first field test is uh, is fly kind of haphazardly. I mean, obviously in a safe and responsible location, but you know, make abrupt make abrupt turns, go pretty fast while filming. See if I can, since this does only have a two-axis gimbal instead of a three-axis gimbal, how will this handle flying and filming at the same time? You know, that's that's to be uh, that's that's to be tested and then also the uh, the battery life you know how long does it last I think that they may uh, tout around 16 minutes real world based upon my experience of previous DJI drones I'm guessing that I may get 12 to 14 minutes comfortably I never fly until the battery is completely depleted to be safe you know I don't want to I don't want to get in a hairy situation where I have to land haphazardly so Another thing about this controller that's important to notice is that around the sticks, and the sticks feel super nice, they've got this little rubberized piece. I mean, the just the attention to detail from a design perspective is just it's super, it's fascinating. It really is. In the middle of the controller, you got a sport mode button, you know, if you want to fly in and fly out <clears throat> more quickly. Some viewers in the, in the past made a good point about sport mode. They said even if you're not interested in a racing drone, the sport modes of value because you can get to and from your filming destination more quickly so that that's a good point obviously you got a return home button you got a pause button you got an FN button you got a power button and then on the top you've got a video record button you got a camera stills button and then you got I think a customizable button I'm assuming this is the gimbal wheel on this side so gonna be fun in the field this thing is still charging I mean it's charging out of the box so I just want to get enough charge so when I go to the field here in a minute that uh, that I've got enough controller juice. And, and that's another thing. I think that controller, if it's fully charged, again, haven't tested it, but I think it could potentially have long enough battery life to fly through multiple batteries, a lot more than three batteries. So, And again, I've got two batteries. Two batteries came with mine. So let's see... Do you have the DJI headset? I do not. Uh, it looks nice. It looks very well made. But from a from from being able to use the DJI headset perspective, I just don't know how I would do it because most countries have uh, have laws in place that prohibit remote pilots remote pilots in command from uh, 
from flying was something that would that would hamper their ability to have a visual line of sight and obviously fpv goggles would prevent the remote pilot in command from meeting that requirement because they wouldn't be flying visual line of sight they wouldn't see the drone they wouldn't maintain constant visual line of sight with the drone because it would be an fpv view now it'd be cool if you had a friend or somebody in the field and a remote pilot in command was flying the drone maintaining visual line of sight while their friend that was not flying was watching the fpv action unfold through the goggles that could be a cool scenario but in a perfect world do you really want to halfway enjoy an experience because from that that perspective the person watching would probably be wanting to fly and the person flying would probably be wanting to experience the fpv so it's it's impossible to do both in most countries throughout the world uh, without potentially entering a uh, a troublesome scenario to say the least so for that reason i'm not interested in it i mean if if it uh if if regulations loosen and 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 things become more accommodating for drone hobbyists then that that would definitely be a technology that i would want to explore and back in the days i did explore fpv technologies but then because of all the you know the heightened uncertainties blah 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 it was something that i that i that i vacationed from so uh anyway yeah it's going to be fun i mean this is this is a very well designed aircraft so i'm i'm ready to get it out in the field and uh you know see see what it can do for us and as far as um as far as any questions you know ask ask anything ask any questions you've got because i'm going to uh i'm just going to try to line up a list a laundry list of things to try to answer you know go out in the field and fly and and see if i can answer those questions so yeah i mean this this uh initial impressions again i just literally got it out of the box about a half hour or so ago and initial impressions are super strong i mean this thing is uh it's from a build quality perspective it is top notch and i really want to get god i want to i want to do that first flight today but part of me says you know what and obviously i've still got to update the firmware if there's firmware updates available so i may even wait until just like super early tomorrow morning and film the first flight then and what i may do today for all of y'all is uh i obviously will release the unboxing video today and some other videos so maybe i'll get some close-ups of the of the drone itself the controller share some of that content with you and then work to get you the uh the first field test video first thing tomorrow morning so um can you do in flight with controller actually there's a lot of flight modes uh, and joseph says we are so lucky to have this technology at our fingertips yeah it's absolutely incredible technology it's it's crazy to think how how rapidly uh, this the drone industry has already evolved and and we haven't seen anything yet we really haven't i mean we're just on the we're on the cusp of something potentially great uh, if regulations don't uh, <clears throat> destroy this hobby so that's something always again i preach it over and over you know be your own drone evangelist uh, share a positive message when you're flying your drone you know put on prop guards promote that safe and responsible look i mean don't put on an act actually be safe and do things that you can do while you're being safe to even further enhance the vibe that yeah that's a safe and responsible person you know they're they're enjoying this hobby in a safe and responsible way because that's what we need you know we got to have that if we're going to if this hobby is going to uh, continue to thrive so um yeah so it's the controller still charging and i'm going to update i've actually i'll probably have to download a, a dji go app update to my do my iPod touch here and get get everything paired up because that'll be uh, let me see if there's an update available I hope I'm already current because some of this stuff I knew see I didn't expect to get this thing until uh, until next week and I guess it got through through shipping faster than expected so that was you know that that made my day I did not expect to have this okay DJI go for DJI Go 4 for Spark. Okay, so there is an update. I'm installing that update now. It says DJI Go 4 for Spark. 
Okay, so that'll be the latest app. And obviously what I'll do in the studio, I will uh, I will pair everything, make sure everything's up to date, and then take it out in the field. And and actually I don't think I don't think I'm gonna be able to wait until the morning to fly this thing for the first time. I think this is gonna have to be uh, something that I do now. And uh, you know, I wanna let this show run a little bit longer while we're while I'm downloading this app, but I think I'm gonna have to hit the field and get this uh, I get this first flight for all of y'all because it's uh i mean this is huge this this is no joke it's 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 tiny but it's huge it's huge that this tiny thing is going to provide so much excitement so yeah aka coos i am not gonna i'm not gonna wait i know that if i wait i'm gonna drive myself crazy because i've got this thing in front of me i've got this spark and i've got a field and i've got you know batteries that are charged so why would i wait you know there's there's no reason to wait so this is going to be uh, i mean i am I, I am beyond excited because i had my doubts you know with before i received this i had my doubts about the build quality and if we're getting a little good bit of network congestion right now uh, that's because i am downloading uh, dji go 4 the app update and it's almost finished so we ought to have this congestion clear here in just a second you got Christmas on a Friday in June go for it well I hope it is and I hope I didn't get any bad Santa jokes because you know again this thing looks nice and feels nice I hope it's uh, I hope it is uh, I hope it performs as good as it looks if that makes sense take this sticker off heck yeah yeah this this is going to be potentially epic and that's the coolest thing you know when i'm driving to and from or if in a in a boat or whatever or if i'm using usb solar panels i can recharge the controller and the and the drone itself because it's you know it's that micro usb so that's that's a huge convenience and that's something that you know people may not think about with this smaller travel size and smaller travel weight is also having that ability now something i'm curious about and i have to find these and i'll put these on uh epicdroneshow.com for y'all <clears throat> but i'm gonna have to find some filters for this lens because i can already tell you i'm not gonna i'm not gonna feel too confident about uh flying around with without protection on my lens so have to find those and let's see i mean what else what else do y'all have uh dji spark related what questions do y'all have at this point in time uh, anything special that you want me to to try to uh to try to put to the test uh, during my first few videos in the field so we've got uh let's see yeah, I, th I think I am going to fly it today, but, you know, worst case, I'll, f I'll fly it uh, early tomorrow morning and get the video out. But uh, Joseph says it has to be good. DJI hasn't slipped up yet. Every product gets better. I have quite a DJI collection building. Yeah, the range I won't really be able to test because I'll be, I'll be testing in a field. Uh, the only time I go long range is if I'm out over op international waters. And I, and I won't be doing that for this first flight. So, uh, but I will, you know, fly in a line of sight. I'll see, you know, how far I can take it and still, still stay, stay in line of sight, see how the FPV looks at, at, the, uh, at the maximum range of my, of my line of sight. So, yeah, this, this thing is... Uh, yeah, the battery, uh, game hunting, New Zealand, uh, New Zealand. Uh, yeah, that's that's gonna be that's gonna be interesting. Try hand takeoff and hand landing with phone, not with gestures. To be frank, that is something that I probably won't do, and I know it sounds stupid, but I'm afraid of it because, you know, with these propellers spinning, even with the prop guards on, I personally wouldn't feel confident with trying to catch a, a flying object i know 
they even demoed it. DJI even uh, demonstrated that within some of their videos, but I, I personally wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. So that's probably something I I won't do or, or wouldn't encourage anybody else to do either. So just trying to be as safe as possible with these things. They said they had a mode that made the camera bank like an aircraft. Huh. Well, it's going to be interesting. And I, I know the, the first charge of these two batteries is probably not going to, not going to yield that much excitement. So, so I'll have to, probably I won't touch the gesture piece during this first flight. I'm just going to go more after the video quality, video stability the flight dynamics, uh, the uh, fluidness of the controls, that sort of thing. So I've got my app updated and let's see. Yep, DJI Go 4. I'm going to try to pair this. Uh, this is this stuff's going to take a while. Yeah, um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get all this stuff updating, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to try to take this thing out in the field. Collision avoidance test. That's a great one. I did that uh, with with my other drones with a uh, with my vehicle. I would see how close I could get before it would before it would stop. That's that's a great test. I'll do that. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to get y'all updated with all this very soon and again just stay tuned to my youtube channel youtube.com forward slash irix guy and then also uh you know epic drone show.com and i think i've got i got my camera back there on the charger i think it ought to be good to go so i'm just gonna i'm gonna stop talking because i know y'all like this live show and i do too but i'm gonna take this sucker out sucker out in the field and see what it does so stay tuned share with others and we will have follow-up live shows and we're going to just dissect everything we can about the dji spark again this is the production model of the dji spark this is not a pre-release version uh, this is the production model and you can go to epicdroneshow.com or irixsky.com and find them there the various bundles and various colors so now uh well i will talk to y'all later thanks for tuning in uh, sorry for the short show. We're, we're only about 44 minutes in, but there will be a lot more. This is just the, hey, I got it out of the box, and things are about to get exciting moment. Thanks for watching, and uh, be sure to subscribe. And uh, let me see. i got to find my window. i got to go to my control board. Uh, this is a complicated broadcast here. Thanks for watching, and y'all have a good day. Hey, y'all. I, Rick Sky here. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to subscribe, like, and share. It's viewers like you that enable my channel to continue to grow. Thank you.